Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being your show, which about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about The Lincoln Lawyer, Season 1, Episode 9. Another great episode. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. So, after everything that was kind of taken care of in the previous episode with the whole situation of the case advancing to where it is now currently... We've gotten to the revelation at the end of the previous episode where uh, Trevor wants to get on the stand, which even is, he's like, isn't that kind of like the one thing you never want to do? And it's like, yeah, but as it, you know, despite everyone's objections, like, you know, even Cisco's like, does he, do you really have to do that? It's like, as his lawyer, I have to do what my client wants. And even Golan's is like, right, you got me backed into a corner. Yeah, I'm bleeding a little bit, but fine, I'll give you a deal and even Mickey knows a deal probably would be the better offer because they know, like, the jury could still go either way. But even more so when you have Trevor being like, no, nah, put me on the stand. And it's like, oh, don't do that. You could, like, literally blow everything up. Because Mickey knows no matter what you do, even if it's he's prepared uh, Trevor as best as he can, even if he has, it still doesn't change the fact that this is you. you this is going to be, like, uh, Golance is going to get some a few, a few blows in, essentially, when it comes to this, so... And obviously going to he like Mickey's like, all right, I'm going to talk to Trevor about it. But he's like, I know Trevor's going to say no deal. So Trevor gets on the stand because Mickey had run him through things. And I even love Lorna being like, even if you're found guilty or not guilty, I'll always kind of wonder. I'll always think maybe you did it or something like that, which even Mickey's like, yeah, Lorna, stop. But nevertheless, Trevor goes on the stand and basically the narrative Mickey tries to stick with the entire time. It's like, right, you love your wife, right? You would never do this. So kind of painting that picture, trying to paint him as a loving husband. But the moment Golance gets his chance, he rips that apart being like, oh, you said you knew about, but the fact is you've lied to the cops over and over again because Mickey even tried to get ahead of that being like, right, you lied to the cops. Why did you do it? He's like, if I didn't, I knew they immediately suspect me. So pleading out stuff too that's reasonable enough but, you know, the moment Golant's got his opportunity, he started ripping all that to shreds of like, oh, do you really, like, love your wife? Was there a prenup? Meaning, like, hey, you have extra motive that, like, if she wanted a divorce, maybe that's what she wanted to talk to Sonya about is because she wanted to split from you. Is that what you guys, uh, weren't you guys arguing about the affair? And he's like, yeah, she, you know, so suggesting that that was motive enough that you there is no prenup so if you get divorced your wife is going to take half of everything so breaking in piece after piece after piece of oh let me enter this piece of evidence let me enter this piece of evidence and allow me to enter this piece of evidence as he was kind of tearing trevor down and even trevor was almost like yeah this probably wasn't the best idea so, well what has mickey been telling you the entire time do not do this even mickey was like we are winning why are you basically going to torpedo everything by doing this? So, at the end of the day, it's like, yep, wreck shop. Uh, Mickey has no more witnesses and stuff after this. So, afterwards, it's like, right, now all that's left is the closing statements. When he wrote up one, but Lorna was like, yeah, but this doesn't sound like you. It sounds like Jerry. But for Mickey, he's like, ever since I took on this case, I feel like I'm wearing a dead man suit. It's like, you don't want to say that in your closing statement. But it's like, yeah. Because she's like, this is what Jerry would say, but it doesn't feel like a Mickey Holler closing statement. And he's just, because everything's stacked against him, like, especially after everything with Trevor, it didn't help their calls in the end. If anything, it opened the opportunity for things to get messy. And could definitely, at that point, it was already kind of like, maybe it could go either way because of Trevor's testimony. It may even leave, lend more towards the defense coming out on top. Either way. So Mickey was trying to like lead with the evidence because if he didn't lead with the evidence and gun residue and stuff like that, because he's getting so technical with it rather than focusing on that type of side of the whole thing, because it's, if he doesn't, what else do I have? So, and once again, Golant's going in there, evidence, evidence, evidence. It's like, right, use your logic. Do not let them manipulate the, this whole thing with the gun residue. Saying, oh, they want you to make you think, oh, because something I forgot to bring up, a damning thing, is that it's like, oh, Golant was like, oh, you never use a gun, right? Oh, what's this gun? It's the gun that the main character that Laura's, uh, that's based around Laura, uses for the rest of the game, right? That's the same gun that was used to kill your wife. 
coincidence like okay yeah and the defense is going to make you think that's just a coincidence but it's not this man he killed Jan he killed his wife it's simple as that you need to find him guilty and so Mickey gets up there and he crosses out the statement he was going to make and he's like right starts off with his daughter my daughter hates math how am I going to use this and then he applies it and breaks it down seven minutes he's like are you telling me that my client was able to get rid of everything shoot kill Jan, um, Laura, and get rid of the evidence because the cops did not find the murder weapon. They did not find him covered in blood. So you're saying that he did all that in seven minutes because that's all the time he would have had to clean everything up by the time he got there and the five minutes later necessary to call the cops. And then like two minutes later, like the videographer showed up and started immediately filming. So yeah, you can't tell me he had enough time. It's impossible. That's the math here. So that's what Mickey was kind of riding on in that case. And he's like, right, Golance is telling you use logic. He's like, I, I agree. That's what you need to do. Logically, this would be impossible for my client to do this all in that time frame. And it was especially for the cops to have not found anything. Because the area where he could have disposed of everything was like a 10-minute, like, downhill thing. So it's like he wouldn't have had enough time to go down there and get back up before the cops was arrived. So... So now it's just simply now waiting for what the jury's going to come back. Uh, but then you have Cisco, because I thought Cisco was going to unveil something that was going to come through at the very end of the trial. It kind of did, but I thought it was going to be something in Trevor's favor. It's like, nope, it's damning evidence, in fact, because he got in contact with Trevor's um, partner, well, friend, uh, Pavel. Uh, Sergey's son, and it turns out the whole Russian thing was bullshit because it's like, no, like Cisco looked into it, all his all the backing he got for the company in the game came from legitimate um, sources and it wasn't anything like shady involved. In fact, Pavel like avoided like any calls related to him, but there was another roommate which Cisco got in contact with that dude. That dude was like Pavel hated Trevor, so there's no way his father, Sergey, would ever help Trevor because he'd be like, no, like, my son hates you, I hate you too. So it's like, okay, if that's the case, so why the hell did Trevor, um, come up, why did he come up with this lie? What was the purpose behind that? It, it seems super shady. And then Cisco asked the question again, you, you were kind of pretty much winning. Why potentially blow up the entire situation by going on trial, on going on um, on the stand? Especially if he's claiming that Russians are going to be gunning for him. Like, oh my God, we can't have a mistrial or anything. We got to get this done as soon as possible because if it don't, Sergey and his men are going to be upset because things aren't going their way. So why threaten all of that by going on a stand when you clearly told him, like, right, that that could torpedo and backfire on him? And Mickey's like, right, I don't know. And it comes back. The jury decided he's not guilty. And you can tell Mickey's like not happy about it because now he's like from the very beginning just something he he said from the very beginning it felt like he was missing something from this case and now he feels it even more so. And it's like even with the non guilty verdict, everyone's upset. You see Laura's family's upset. Um uh Carol was there, which even Lorna reached out to her at the be earlier before they did the closing statement saying Right, I should have said I'm sorry for your loss. No matter which way this goes, I hope it brings you some peace or something. And I think Carol was kind of taken a little aback by all of that. There was certain, there is, does seem like there's something off with Carol. Like, not, she seems like she knows something, or there's some part to this because when things were being said, I think. Maybe not necessarily, I don't think necessarily, maybe it was a closing statement, maybe it was uh, when he was on the stand. She kind of looked down at certain points, and I, I don't know, maybe what some of what he was saying was getting to her. I don't know. There was like, she was making some faces, and I'm like, she feels like she knows something she hasn't let anyone else, you know, be in to know about. But um, obviously when the, the verdict was made, she was upset. And Jerry, I mean, not Jerry, uh, Trevor was so happy, but you can tell... Uh, Mickey wasn't and he's look, especially looking at Laura's family and everything it's just like it's not because he knows something shady because Cisco brought it up so he's kind of dealing with that the entire time 
because he'd actually had a conversation. We'll, we'll tie back to this later with Maggie, where Maggie talked about the whole um, Emil situation. It's like, right, I know you're the type of person to kind of do whatever it takes. You'll, you'll kind of cross a little bit of a line to win. And I think all that kind of hit Mickey, because despite everything, Mickey might kind of go up to that line, but he tried his best to make this trial as fair as possible. So the whole, si well, once again, Mickey said he didn't do it, but I feel like that's BS about like juror number seven. Maybe in the long run, he actually didn't do it, but I, you know, it, it's too advantageous for him to get rid of it. And even he's like, oh, now that juror seven gone, we can do this fair and square. He wanted to try and do this fair and square. He did everything legally within his bounds to like give the best defense to Trevor. It's like, you know, he might have gotten up to that line, but he never fully crossed it. So it's like, right, with everything that's going on here, my client lying to me, like some something's going on here. And it just, it didn't know. None of it sat right with him because he was starting. I think he was getting an inkling like, "Hell, oh, maybe I didn't really get an innocent person." I think he was already starting to think like that. But I, once again, what Maggie said of him doing whatever it takes, he wants to show. I think because he doesn't want Haley to look at him that way because he, he's like, "Oh, I wonder where Haley gets the idea that I'm just kind of a despicable lawyer that kind of does whatever it takes to win." I mean, especially after um, Anton, because that was also the point that drove it home too during his closing statement. It's like, right, the cops haven't looked at any other. Uh, person. The whole point of this was to show you that the cops had tunnel vision, and I have proven that they had tunnel vision. They did not at all look at Anton, who is a strong possible suspect. So, that's pretty damning, and Anton kind of chewed Mickey out last episode, being like, right, my reputation, you're attacking that, and so many people count on his job and my business, and my business only goes for as long as my reputation is good. So, but you didn't think about that at all while you're trying to protect your clients. So, some of those icky sides of being a defense attorney in those regards, in a situation like this, and I think combined with, oh, what Haley believes in knowing that, oh, Maggie plays a role, like, potentially is why she kind of views what he does that way. I think that's why he went to a meal. He was like, right, despite everything going on, I'm not the type of lawyer to screw over my clients because he's at the end of the day is like, right. That's why Jerry hid you here because he didn't want the defense. He didn't want the prosecutors to know about you to see that blind side coming, essentially, I think. I don't know whether that's implying like, oh, he was trying to hide away his magic gun or... Or the Jerry at the end kind of uh, regret it. And he was just like, no, I'm going to hide the evidence that can prove uh, everything with Trevor. Like, I don't know if that's what that was indicating either side or either way. And for Mickey, it's like, right, I can't give you back your six months that you've been in prison. But I can make it. You can sue Jerry's estate so that, you know, he's got mal... Um, Malficent, malficient insurance or whatever like you know so it's like right you will get paid and that can at least help get you off your feet after you get out of prison after a year so and even Emil's like right I guess not all lawyers are the same I thought thought you'd be happy and then it look he looks at uh Trevor and Mickey at the end you know and Trevor's just like right police do your jobs find Lord's real killer I do whatever I, it takes to kind of help with that and Mickey's just on the side of him just kind of being like out of it you know and then it's like oh yeah uh Jerry did all the hard work he did all the dirty work and you get all the glory and that sparks something and um Mickey and I'm like what is that all about and then he confronts Trevor. I was like, so I was right. It is that situation of, oh, did he actually do it? It's, it's like, oh, it seems like he did it, but he claims to be innocent. So, but then you're going to find out he actually did do it. Turns out, yes, it is the case. And I love Mickey being like, how you were able to do it is because you were able to do it. You literally showed us right, you did it right in front of us. And none of us realized, not even Golance realized what he was doing. Because Mickey realized the thing that he was doing on his phone, he was controlling a drone that had the gun and the um, the bloody clothes. That's how he was able to dispose of it in those couple minutes. Why no one ever found it? Because he was also transporting it in that time frame while the cops were already there too. So, because I was thinking like, oh, was he playing? My thought was like, oh, could he be trying to play the game and um, oh, like want to see Laura? One that was me. That was me giving him way too much damn credit. It's like no, he was doing the terrible murderer thing of like, oh, let me get rid of my evidence. So. But what Mickey figured out because of Emil's statement is, and David, he even brought it up 
during his testimony on his stand, like, oh, how him and Laura first met. They were in class. He put a thing up there. He got it wrong. The teacher completely erased it because he's like, oh, you made an error. And Laura was like, oh, no, I made that same error, too. He went by and saw, oh, my God, like, she got it right, you know. And just to make, so I wouldn't be the butt of the joke. She, like, said, like, oh, I got it wrong, too. But she got it right. Laura is better than him. at the, Even, you know, once again, what did Sonya say? That she was a master coder that she never, like, you know, and oh, and she said it herself that Trevor kept her in his shadow. Turns out that's the case because Laura's the programmer. It's like, right, every, the whole game and everything, that's her baby. She's the one that made it, not Trevor. He's just got his name all over it because Laura was still with Chaos Games. And if anything she made would still be their intellectual property. So they're able to keep it at parallax by saying Trevor's the one that made it. But after a decade of him getting all the glory for being so smart, being a genius, she was talking to Sonya because she wanted to take it all back. So it wasn't just like, oh, she was going to divorce you. She wanted the truth to come out there. And it wouldn't just be like, oh, you lose this money now because obviously your your people, are, this acquisition that's trying to happen right now and everything you would have lost everything. Your reputation would have went down the drain. You would have been seen as a fraud. There would be no recovery because also your ego couldn't take it. That's why Mickey's like, he's like, I couldn't understand why you would want to get on a stand because he's, and I love it. You're an addict. I was like, oh, beautiful how we bring that all full circle. Like him being an addict, is he and everything. And now it's like, oh, the reason why you did what you did is because you yourself are an addict. You're an addict to people thinking you're a genius. You needed to go on stand and make show people how smart you are. I think it was all you know, it was also like playing into the whole fact is like, oh if I could if I could sucker all of you while I'm on the stand just proves how good I am, proves how smart I am. But it's like, no, you're not. You're a fraud. Laura's a real smart one and everything. But it doesn't matter. Double Jeopardy is a bitch. I mean, granted, it's it's put in place for a reason. God forbid, uh, you know, any uh, situation where um, Double Jeopardy. Well, there's situ there. I'm sure there's. I don't know. I'm not gonna because I don't know the, the the statistic all around law wise in cases where it's like, oh, the person definitely is guilty but get protected by Double Jeopardy because they got. I was like, oh, they were acquitted or found not guilty, and you can't try someone for the same thing twice. There's good and bad with that, so. And no matter what new, I, cause I, there's no, cause even if new evidence arises, it doesn't matter. You'd have to basically charge him for something else. But, cause some of that would have to, cause I think some of that, even any wiggle room you would have, some of that would still probably get allocated under the murder itself. So you probably wouldn't be able to really. I think the best you could probably do is expose him and he'd lose everything. But, you know, I think at the end it'd be Mickey's word versus head, so it really wouldn't matter as much. I mean, it'd probably be a thing of like, oh, your lawyer went against you. And obviously, Mickey's like, I don't want anything with your fucking money. I'm not trying to blackmail you. He's just trying to figure it out. Because he's wondering, like, right, juror number seven, like... Everyone that's behind all of this, he's like, I have no idea who's actually behind this. I don't even know who killed Jerry. And to be told, I don't care. I won. I'm great. Ha <laughs> ha, everything's coming up. Sunshine and roses for me. It's like, wow, like, really? Yeah, it just makes that whole situation of him on a stand, it just disgusts you. Because I was like, oh, you fake, you faker. Just, like, getting everything to go your way. You know, because Mickey said, I forgot the number one rule when it comes to defending your client everybody lies because what he's lied every step of the way changed things to fit the narrative that he's trying to create it just ah oh, you sneaky sneaky bastard so now mickey feels bad because once again he had that conversation about his dad like i will give everyone the best defense but at the end of the day uh, if uh, if I'm representing someone and they're guilty, then yes, I'm fine with them. I won't lose any sleep over it. But it's the ones that are not guilty that you know are innocent. Those are the ones that sit with you. Because that's the messed up thing. He made Jesus take a deal, but now it's a situation of like, right, the guy who's actually guilty got away with it scot-free. And he his public reputation is, oh my God, he's not the one that did it. Like, you know, so, because now he's put the generals, he's got the police looking into Anton. So Anton's uh, reputation is going to take a hit. Plus, he's also um, just public, you know, because of that publicly, now people won't look at him necessarily like, oh, he did it. Like, no, he was tried and found not guilty. 
Because Mickey's going to feel like, right, I gave this case everything. I bent over backwards. I had my light bulb moment. I, I was on fire during this case. I gave my great closing testimony for a guilty person. Like, you know, it's like, it's one thing to give them a, a, a great defense. It's another where I'm sure for Mickey, it's like, I went, ab- I feel like I went up way above and beyond. And I, he feel, probably feels guilty. Like I didn't give Jesus that same, that same fire that I gave to, um, Hey, Seuss, but, you know, maybe he feels that way, maybe he doesn't. Because I think what also eats away at Mickey himself, too, is, well, I mean, he wanted to believe that. At one point, he's like, oh, I believe you are a uh, innocent person, Trevor. But it's like, right, he was ignoring so many signs what was right in front of his eyes because he himself is an addict, too. For, from the very beginning, he took this case because he wanted to put his name back out. He wanted to put his name on the map again. And because of that, he had plenty of opportunities to walk away from this case, but he didn't. And now he's helped a murderer get away with a double homicide. So now it's like, right, because I I was so addicted to try and get my power, my name back out there and stuff, I did this. I probably, if I wasn't so blinded by that, addicted to that, then maybe, just maybe, I might have seen through it sooner about Trevor, but he didn't, and he can't do anything about it now because of the double jeopardy, so. Once again, it's just like how gloaty um, Trevor is, it's just kind of what upsets you the most. But once again, there's still the conversation of who's the one behind all of this? Who was, you know, who does Juror 7 work for? Like, who set that all up? Uh, Who was the one behind killing Jerry? Because it does seem like it wasn't Trevor, so we'll see. Uh, Since I brought her up early, Maggie uh, and Lankford go after Aquino, but... He will not testify against, um, they can't get him against Soto. Because at first when it seemed like he's sobbing, I'm like, that bastard's about to start laughing. And in fact, he does. So he's like, oh yeah, I saw my phone was kind of messed up after I got it back. And he's like, yeah, I saw through all that. I know what's what. And it's like, right. So they're able to hold him, but the moment he gets out, he's going to tell Soto, like, oh, someone else is betraying us. So they're going to try and make it seem like it was someone else within the gang, his gang or whatever that he's associated with, his men, that maybe one of them might be the traitor just to buy them enough time. So Maggie goes to Mickey about getting um, getting um, Tanya to wear a wire, which Mickey's like, no. Don't do that. You're going to put her life in danger. But once again, Maggie kind of goes like, yeah, you're kind of willing to kind of go above and beyond too. That like, oh, like the whole Emil thing. And he's like, but yes, I go above and beyond for my clients. And Tanya's one of them. And he's like, you're putting her in danger. And it's like, this is kind of the only way. He's like, fine. She does this. You leave her alone. You never ask her for anything. You let her go into witness protection and raise her child. And she, and even Maggie was kind of like, oh, that's a tall order. He's like, you got to make that happen. So Tanya meets with Maggie. And Maggie tries to say, like, right, you do have a choice. I'm not going to force you. It's like, yeah, but you put her in a situation where she kind of has no choice, right? Because you basically said you could, you have one choice. You could, you know, uh, not worry about all this and then just stay with him and raise the child again. She's like, what? No, I'm not going to do that. It's like. Okay, and the other thing is you can wear a wire and, you know, and it's like, you're not, you're saying like, oh, she has a choice. It's like, you're giving her no choice at all. You're trying to make it seem like, oh, like they're the illusion of choice. And it's like, that's kind of scummy on her. Like, once again, I get you're trying to take down a bad guy, but it's like putting Tanya in that position. This is kind of what Mickey was talking about, because it is a thing of you are putting her in danger. But Maggie's making the promise that everything's going to be okay. Even getting Linkford on her side being like, no, we'll, we'll make it so that. You know, if any hint of danger comes out, we'll we'll pull her out. So, it still was a lot closer than I would have wanted it to be. I kind of got nervous when uh, Linkford was like, oh, the signals were good. I was like, don't do this, don't do this. But luckily, she improvised, and I think she was close enough that everything kind of worked out. And they finally got the confession out of him. But then he started getting suspicious. It's like, she's like, I didn't know anything. He's like, yeah, you didn't know anything until now when I just confessed. I thought... She kind of messed up, and I'd had to go back and rewatch it. But when he was like one of my employees, and she was like, "Oh, did he?" I'm like, "I don't 
I mean, maybe he did. Maybe he said he. I just said, like, did he ever say the gender of the person, the employee? All he said was employee of mine might be ratting me out. I don't know if he specified it. And for her to say he made me go, like, well, not less it's mainly men that work for him. So maybe he didn't think too much of it. Maybe he said he because he didn't catch on. And I feel like that would have been such a damning thing. Because I took notice of when she said he. I was like, well, did he ever say the gender of the person? Because he's like, oh, it's an employee. But that's about it. Well, because I think he just said, like, in general. Because I don't think he was talking about necessarily Aquino. He knew that Aquino had been arrested and stuff like that. But it's like, he was kind of... Because she was trying to shift it to be like, oh, what if Aquino's lying? So, but like I said, things got a little too close for comfort because he started choking around. I was scared that he was just going to throw her off the balcony or whatever. It's like, well, you can't do that because, well, you're all right, she's already been... Like, I mean, choking her out wouldn't do any good either, but luckily the cops got there in time. It's like, once again, it's still a little too close for comfort. A few more seconds, he probably would have killed her. Like, he wouldn't have made it up in time to save her. So, that wouldn't have sat well with me. But it seems like everything's okay because even... um. The Mickey's deal with Maggie was that he that she doesn't have to testify. I'm still scared and worried that despite all this, Tanya's still going to end up dead because Soto does have his connections. And there's that legal thing where, yeah, you can play someone's testimony even after they die. But the problem is because that already happened with her previous witness and that kind of had to get thrown out because it doesn't give the defense an opportunity to cross examine and rebuttal some of that testimony so that's what happened with david her previous witness and the same thing could happen to tanya if she ends up dead which there's a strong possibility of things ending up sadly like that but we'll have to wait and see so now with all those advancements and those um developments we do touch on izzy a little bit where she gets a text from her um ex being like yo do you want to go out like or whatever and this is after because izzy told Mickey that she was going to go immediately go to talk to her sponsor and then um, go to a meeting earlier, like at the beginning of the episode. Because um, of how, because she he was like, right, was this a stumble or a fall? She's like, it's a stumble. Everything's still good. Everything's still kosher. But uh, getting a text from her, as you could tell, it was still just kind of rocking her a little bit because it's like, right, I can't, like, I think it's the guilt of, man, I, um, I almost like did drugs, but also like once, once again, but also I, I'm also the person that is responsible for sending you down this road. And now, you know, it's almost ironic that she's the one pulling you back in and you can almost end up spiraling down because, so I think all those complex feelings are staring up inside of Izzy, but the moment, uh, the moment uh, Mickey got the call about Izzy, I was like, damn, she passed out. But the moment he got there and there was no one there, I was like, it's a setup. Because they, they know enough about Izzy because uh, because of the um, the wire in the car. So they know enough for it to be um, to use that against him. And lo and behold, Mickey, he kind of finds out the last second he realizes it's a setup. Gets knocked out. Juror number seven. You're like, so he's the hitman. He's the one that killed Jerry. So the fact is you haven't killed Mickey immediately begs the question, why not? Because it's like, right, you and Jerry, you and uh, you and Vincent should have left this alone. You should have just done what you were told. So we'll ultimately have to wait and see where this goes. Because Jerry was already kind of reluctant. Because once again, he was going to try and do the right thing by bringing in a new pool of jurors by asking for a continuance that once again that was always the theory of why he ended up getting popped and i think they're getting back at mickey for like oh you might have won and stuff like that but still you could have jeopardized everything maybe even him confronting trevor trevor well because trevor claimed to not know who's behind this but it's like not unless he contacted him but i see that as unlikely so we'll have to wait and see how the situation plays out for mickey going forward next episode's the season finale so I'm very, very excited to ultimately see how they end up wrapping up the season. But really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day, and goodbye.